So 3-1 to Stoke City on the day, a disappointing outing for a patchwork uh, Sheffield United team. Brian Dean's alongside me in the studio. Gage on, on comms there said that we've got to keep it in context given the injuries we're dealing with yeah. uh, and given what the noise will be outside. Yeah. Th this is, I guess, where Paul Heckingbottom really finds out about this group, isn't it? It is. I, I mean, we, we spoke before the game about, you know, opportunities for young players. Uh, I think that he will have learned a little bit more about them. I think one of the main things that he will have learned is that, you know, we, we you know, there are there are places that you we can't afford mm. not to have certain players in. There was nothing to build on. You know, if you think about the players at the back, you know, their first pass forward was difficult. A lot mm. of the time, you had players looking as though they were stretching for the ball. People just weren't in places where they normally would be if, if we had the full complement out. Um, so that's going to be very frustrating. However, everybody, uh, sorry, every team does get injuries, mm. you know, so we have to keep that into context. I think where we have to kind of, for me now, it's very important. I mean, Paul Heckenbottom's got a very important job, but I think the players have to manage themselves as well. And, and what I mean by that is we can't go picking up stupid bookings. And, um, you know, I, I think case in point, you know, Ollie McBurney has, has picked up bookings that aren't for challenges, for example. He was the kind of player we needed in a game like that. It's a physical game. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to manage yourself in, in situations, not get too emotional. And, 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 and you know, that, that's, you know, these are the things that cost you over time. You know, we have to have players out there. And it's not only that that I can point at to be in the situation now, but we have to manage ourselves. You know, who, and, and I keep saying it, who's going to step up? Who is going to take things on board? This is, a, this is an ideal opportunity for us to put a promotion run together. But it will unfold if we can't manage ourselves, not just the physios and the management. The players have got to manage themselves. They've got to step up and step into the void and say, look, this is a great opportunity for me to be, you know, somebody who's going to be revered forevermore. You know, Billy Sharp can't do it forever. Mm. You know, Billy's like, you know, Billy's coming to the end of his career. We need people to start stepping up who are in that squad now. And I'm talking about players who've got real ability. You know, we have some very good players in midfield. We've got, we've got lots of options up front, but you've got to, you've got to want to be the man. You do. Um, it's difficult, though, to a degree when you look at some of the substitutes that Paul Heckingbottom was bringing on. You had a 17-year-old right back. You had Oli mm. Arblaster coming on at 19 in a tough environment. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the second half now. And there weren't many because Stoke were leading 2-1 at half time, and they set out to make it scrappy. And by and large, they succeeded. Yeah, I mean, look, it's like, you know, Stoke... Stoke have got, you know, you can look at their side, they're very physical Th side. This is probably the one moment of real That's quality, isn't it? In that is a brilliant bit of technique from Fosu, I think it is. And, uh, you know, Ollie's in the, in the right place. Um, but again, you know, they're a physical, they're a mm. big physical side. You know, it's not going to be easy for these youngsters and hopefully they will have learned from this experience. I mean, before the game, I was, I thought, if we can get a draw out of this, mm. it's actually a really good result. You know, and, and nothing changes my mind with regards where I think we can finish. I just think that we have to take the lessons from this game, not only the management, but everybody at the club and say, right, OK, we have to have a plan going forward. We've hit a bit of a slump. We, we haven't won for three games. <laughs> let's be honest, you know. It's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah, of it's going to happen, you know, and, and if, you know, let's call it what it is. You know, it's like three games without a win is... is you know, there's soul searching to be done. But I think that, th you know, you can rise from this. And, and that's what we've got to look at now. There's, there's no time for any of the players to, to have their, you know, to be bowing heads. It's a time for self-reflection and saying, look, we go again. It's testament to the job that Stoke did that really the only side of goal that the Blades had in the second half came in the 89th minute. Ollie Norwood, and yeah. if this had gone in, I think it would have been a goal of the season over right there. Oh, my gosh. I mean, this was a tremendous effort. And we, we already know Ollie, Ollie's got a, a great peg on him. But, um, you know, perhaps a little bit optimistic from that range. Um, but, yeah, I mean, look, if, we, if you got to score that in the 89th minute, 
everybody goes home happy, don't they? You know, and, and what I'm saying goes out the window <laughs> as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't. Um, and two minutes into stoppage time with the Blades pushing for that equaliser, yeah. they got caught on the counter-attack. I know Billy Sharp felt in the build-up he should have got a free kick yeah. um, for a foul on halfway. It didn't yeah. come. Um, but it's a well-worked goal. It's a fantastically worked goal. A great movement from, I think it was Campbell, to, to take the defender with him out wide, which just opened up and, and, the, and, the, and the player in the 10 role just made the space in the middle. And then it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic ball across and De Lapp, you know, he's off the mark. You know, he, he would have watched loads of games um, at the stadium because his dad would have been you know, drying balls off on the corner while <laughs> getting them ready to throw <laughs> into the box. But you can see what it meant, of course, yeah. um, to Stoke City, who've got their own struggles as well. We, we've got a week now to, mm. to rest, to yeah. perhaps yeah. patch a few players up yeah. and get a few players fit again. Probably a week's break that comes at exactly the right time. Yeah, I mean, look, every day, every minute, every hour is going to be crucial in terms of getting players back out there. Um, you know, it, it, they weren't outclassed today. It was a scrappy game, mm. you know, and we've got some really good players to come back. So there's that to look forward to. I'm sure it's a lot, you know, that's going to make the whole, give the whole place a lift seeing certain people come back and back on the training pitch and, and giving the manager um, problems again. You know, the, the young players who have come in, it's a great experience. You know, it's not their turn yet, you know, so let's let's make a judgment when... That's a full compliment. Absolutely. Well, okay, Brian, as always, a pleasure to be in your company. A reminder, of course, that the games do keep coming here for the Blades. Next Saturday afternoon, we're entertaining Blackpool here at Bramall Lane, three o'clock kickoff for that one. Then it's a midweek trip down to the Midlands to play Coventry City, 7 7 45 p.m. kickoff, SUTV Live on air from 7 p.m. And then two weeks today, the big one. We host second place Norwich City here at Bramall Lane. The reason they are second place is because they lost 3-2 at home to Preston North End this afternoon. So as bad a week as it might have been for the Blades with no win from three games, the good news is we are still very much top of the championship table. A reminder, of course, that the third string kits, which we saw the Blades players wear for the first time this season today, is now available to pre-order online at the club's online store, if you so choose to buy it. Maybe a good Christmas present. Certainly, Brian Dean earlier said that he might fancy one. We're still uh, to just get that confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, not the best day at the office for the Blades, but we are still top of the table.